Well, late last week, state and federal officials here announced they were changing their Ebola preparedness plans. State Commissioner of Health Dr. Ed Ellinger, along with Governor Dayton and other top elected officials, announced that all hospitals in Minnesota will receive training on how to identify and then isolate possible Ebola patients. Patients with Ebola will then be transferred to as yet unidentified centers of excellence that will have special units set up to handle Ebola. And the State Commissioner of Health, Dr. Ed Ellinger, joins us now. Thank you so much for coming in. Good morning, Esme. Right. Uh, any more clarification on where these centers of excellence will be? Are these going to be in specific hospitals or will they actually be a freestanding uh, containment unit? We've recognized over what's happened over the last week in Texas that the people at most risk are healthcare workers when somebody has Ebola and that to treat those you really need a lot of resources and an infrastructure to handle that and that means the tertiary care centers really need to be where uh, we have people with Ebola being treated and the hospitals in the Twin Cities and throughout the state have recognized this so they're working very rapidly to identify which hospitals could really play that role we're working this week to really try to identify what those hospitals where they may be all right so it, it actually will be in a hospital yeah, as of right now, that looks like if we needed to move as quickly as possible, that's where the infrastructure is. There have been some thoughts about having a freestanding uh, center, but that would take a lot more time to get set up than using the existing facilities. And when will we know what the, where these freestanding centers are? We're hoping are? that by the end of this, this week, you know, the hospital association working with the CEOs of all the hospitals will identify that. In the meantime, there, we do have four treatment centers throughout in various parts of the country that we could contact if we had a patient with Ebola that came in let today. We could contact them to say, would you be able to handle the patient from Minnesota? And that's where it would be probably our first step while we're continuing to stand up the hospitals here in Minnesota. All right. Let's, let's roll some video that we shot at Hennepin County Medical Center on October 3rd, not that long ago, with a nurse, a uh, medical worker actually suiting up for Ebola under the CDC guidelines. These, that, this particular suiting is now obsolete. Uh, the CDC has said this is not good enough. Do, do currently hospitals in Minnesota have the proper suiting or are they going with this suiting? CDC has recognized that what was in place in Dallas was insufficient. It's obvious because transmission occurred. So that they are actually in the process of developing new recommendations that we're hoping will come out within the next couple of days. Uh, we recognize that we're going to have to have more body coverage, different kinds of, of uh, personal protective equipment. And hospitals are recognizing this and are actually going out with those kinds of equipments and the training that needs to go along with that. All right. Uh, a lot of debate. Uh, we heard it on the Sunday morning talk shows, even in some of the political races here. Uh, some candidates, some elected officials calling for an absolute travel ban to and from West Africa. Your physician, the Commissioner of Health, your thoughts on that? Well, certainly that decision would be at a different level than here at the state. But we know that those uh, borders are porous. We know that we need to get uh, humanitarian aid into those countries. So we really need to have some way to get in, you know, get healthcare workers into Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea. Um, and we also need to know that people may get out of those countries. So we need tracking systems in a whole variety of settings. Uh, and closing the borders probably wouldn't accomplish what people would hope it would accomplish. One of the things we've heard is that you can't uh, contract Ebola from somebody unless they have symptoms. There was an incident uh, within the past 10 days of a nurse who now has tested positive getting on an airplane just as she was beginning to manifest symptoms. There are reports that actually she had more serious symptoms than have initially been reported. What is the status of getting health care screenings or Ebola screenings at our airport, uh, screenings that the governor and elected officials have called for? Well, as you know, five, ho or five air ports are now doing screening. The governor and our two senators have requested CDC expand that. We've had a positive response from CDC. We will be hearing within the next couple of days whether or not that uh, we will get the screening at the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport. And finally, we just have a short time left. Uh, a lot of people, their, their confidence in the CDC, their confidence in the federal government, or government's ability to protect people has badly been shaken. Uh, are you confident? Can you give us the confidence that they've got it right now or the CDC knows what it's doing to put enough to protect people? Mm -hmm. Ebola is, is a, a new kind of infection, a new kind of risk. 
we are learning every single day. And I think CDC is responding to the new knowledge uh, from something that is really novel in, in our society. So they're learning, they're responding quickly. We also have a good, strong public health infrastructure throughout the states and at the local level. Uh, I'm confident that our public health system will react in, with the, using the best science we have. As the science changes, we will respond with those new, uh, that new information. Uh, we have a good public health system and we need to support it. All right, well, Dr. Ellinger, thank you so much. I know these past few days and weeks have been very busy for you, so well, we appreciate it. Thanks for asking me to be here. All right.